Thank you for uh, attending tonight's meeting. I will call the 11th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. <coughs> Sue, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? 16 present. Quorum is present. Approval of the minutes. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the previous minutes of the Common Council and the same stand approved as entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Pledge of Allegiance is next. I'd ask that Alderman Radke please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Resignations, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a, a letter from the Fire Chief Mark Zier to uh, the mayor dated August 17th, advising that the effective December 31, 2005 at 5 p.m., uh, Chief Zier would be retiring from the city employment. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. A motion to second to accept and file. Any discussion? Not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Confirmation of Mayor's appointment, Attorney McLean. Uh, these are both dated August 15th. Uh, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Cleo Messner to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the member position of Gene Davis. Cleo Messner's term will expire on 4-30-08. I'd also like to request the removal of Alderman Montemeyer from the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee so as to abide by resolution number 19-0405, which deleted the Chairman of the Committee of the Whole as a member. Signed by the mayor. That's for a motion to confirm. There's a motion and a second under discussion. If not, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. And the next one is uh, Chuck Butler to be considered for appointment to the Coalition Ambulance Quality Assurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Steve Schuffner, whose term expires 43006. Signed by the mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Mm -hmm. There's a motion, a second to confirm under discussion. There be a none. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum, City Clerk Richards. Uh, yes, first on the list would be Eric Edson. Mr. Edson. And Eric, could you give me your home address, please? 3612 Rosewood Court, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to begin my comments by stating that I don't enjoy coming before this body and publicly expressing the frustrations of our membership. But as president of our association, representing the police officers in this city, that is just what our membership has asked me to do. Many of us, including myself, are very disappointed with the increased adversarial relations that we perceive between the police department and a certain factions of this council. I am referring to decisions involving the new police station, municipal court, police staffing, acquiring tasers, and suggesting the privatization of duties currently performed by sworn police officers. Many of these decisions have been predicated on campaign pledges of restoring fiscal responsibility to local government. And as many police department employees are also city taxpayers, we appreciate the efforts to limit frivolous spending. We acknowledge that local governments are struggling with issues of shared revenue and increasing costs, but these problems should not be used as an excuse to shortchange citizens when it comes to public safety, nor should they result in penalizing our employees when it comes to safe working conditions. The decision of the Capital Improvements Committee to recommend postponing building the new police station does just that. This new police station is at least 20 to 25 years overdue. 
Our current building is inadequate to perform 21st century policing and in many ways is unsafe for both employees and citizens. Let me say that again. This building is unsafe. None of you employed in the private sector would tolerate having to work in such a deficient building. That is why this building must be, the, building the new police station must be the council's highest priority. This never ending saga of building this police station has reached the absurd. I ask your honor the mayor to fulfill, fulfill your pledge to see this project through completion and to use your influence to lead this council to that end. The next issue I wish to touch on relates to our staffing. I think it's important for the council and the public to understand that the reference to the police department having 113 employees does not actually equate to police officers. In reality, after subtracting clerical and support staff, supervisors and detectives, and those presently assigned to special assignments, there are currently 49 total police officers actually patrolling districts handling calls for service on a daily basis. Four of those 49 officers are new hires, currently in the field training stage, riding with a field training officer. That leaves essentially 45 officers to cover three shifts, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Simply put, these staffing levels are not adequate to deal with the issues confronting the city. Which brings me to my last point. The mayor has publicly stated that if the city unions win arbitration awards, departments citywide should expect layoffs. Those comments are not fair to our employees. Laying off employees is a political decision and should not be used to influence a labor organization's statutory right to bargain and to pursue arbitration if the negotiation process breaks down. Our membership was not responsible for the city only budgeting for 1.5% wage increases, yet we have offered to split our, our wage offer for 2005, resulting in a 1.5% net increase for the calendar year. Coincidentally, I have also been told that not only was $415,000 budgeted in 2005 for general and salary contingency adjustments, but as of 1231-04, there was also approximately $1.5 million in unreserves that could possibly be used to avoid layoffs. During negotiations, we have also offered other concessions, including paying more for health insurance, but all of these compromises were rebuffed. We have been without a contract since the end of last year. This is the first time that our association has been forced to pursue arbitration. Many in our membership are of the opinion that the city has not bargained in good faith and does not have the best interest of the taxpayer or the employee in mind. I challenge the city and this body to work with the employees, not against us, in a manner or to provide the best level of service to our community in a manner that is both reasonable to the employee and responsible to the taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list would be Dimple Adams. Dimple, can I have your home address, please? 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Susan. And thank you, Council, and thank you, Mayor, uh, for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, I brought with me a copy of my tax bill, which is upside down. <laughs> but um, in my tax bill, I, I just went over some things today. Uh, first of all, with the school portion, it's 35.8%. The munis municipality portion is 33.5%. And the county portion is 22.5%. And the state is 0.73%. And the rest of it is a combination of like 7%. Okay. So that brings me to all the citizen input sessions and budget sessions that have been going on this summer. And um, I frankly don't know where they're going with that. Because I remember attending a meeting 
on July 20th, there was a citizen input meeting about the police station's light site location. And I had two questions. Neither of them have been answered yet. The first question was, what could be done at 23rd Street for shared services that could not be done anywhere else? No one has ever gotten back and told me that. And I thought to myself, it must be written down somewhere because we all have certainly heard it and read it 100,000 times. <clears throat> and the second thing is, the cost of the parking lot that we're bartering with the 23rd Street site location, and no one ever got back to me on that. Well, I called Mr. McDonald the other day, and I did get <clears throat> that it cost about 480 something thousand dollars over a period of a few years to build that parking lot. So I do have that figure, but it's because I made the call and no one got back to me. So I'm wondering what all these sessions are doing if no one is getting back to anybody with answers. Okay, the second thing that I see going on here is everything is getting undone. The first thing that got undone on May 9th with Speedy was, was the rescinding of the Sheridan Park thing. And I know you people are tired of me saying that, but I don't care that you're tired of it, okay? <clears throat> the second thing that has been undone, or you're trying to undo, is the municipal court vote, which I think is a bad idea. The third thing that you've undone, which you did in speedy record time, is the chamber uh, policy that we had going for 20 something years, right when they were gonna build a new building that was going to be easily accessed to, which I think is a bad idea for the city. It's going to create a new department. And now you're wanting to take away the fire station that we okayed to build way on the south side. And that's really a matter of public protection and safety. And now, you want to hold off building the police station for two more years. What is the matter with you people? I don't understand this. And I am one angry taxpayer tonight. You see all of these people out here in the gallery. And they are our lifeline. We are so fortunate to live in a beautiful place like the city of Sheboygan, right? I mean, look at what's going on in the news. I mean, how sad it is on the Gulf Coast. And here we are bickering over where to build a police station. You know, you build it centrally, like the chief has asked over and over and over again. Our neighborhood, which I live one and a half a block of Sheridan Park, we're begging you to build it there. The neighborhood over on 23rd Street is saying, please don't build it here. You don't listen to us. What's it going to take? I am begging this council to put up or shut up. Thank you. Thank you, Temple. Okay, next on the list is John Berner. John? John, could I have your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Common Council members. Boy, I don't know if I can be as forceful as the last two. I've been watching the Common Council meeting at home, and I hear a lot of, about fiscal spending, fiscal spending. And then I was looking at my tax bills from 1999 all the way up until last year. But people fail to realize we pay school tax, county tax, and the tax of the city, and that's all on our tax roll. School seems to get what they want, and the thing that bothers me is there was somebody last year that said that they put their three things on a referendum, <clears throat> but how many other construction was being done to the schools in Sheboygan? And I think maybe one school was missed, but major construction. I have no no qualms about it. But the gymnasiums could have held off. I believe in schools and I believe in keeping them up. 
And I remember the press having an article with, uh, what was it, cheerleaders bags laying in the hallway. What about our police? Where do they keep their stuff? Huh? You're from the press, tell me. You didn't take any pictures down there? Go look at their place they got to operate. And they do that seven days a week, 365 days a year. Municipal court, everybody's going to a municipal court except Sheboygan. We will someday, probably. We're always last on the list. We heard people argue about the room tax. Nobody ever says anything about Skipper Bud running the marina. He's been doing that for how many years and the city's been paying him. I, the, Shared services, you got a library on the north side, a library on the south side, you got one in the middle of the city. There are the communities that are taking their main library and combining them with the school libraries. Savings of money, instead of having one here, one here, one here, with the high school libraries, and making them accessible to the public, the high school. Everybody says now 23rd Street is number one site. 23rd Street was never the number one site. It was Sheridan Park. The people, and I know all the new Common Council members have uh, gone after, I'll say, the older Common Council members, but they did give on this 14th Street. But they gave so the city would look for something inside the city as a police station. And it seems like all the old sites just came back up. We spent more money on, a, on another study. People, I hear this on the radio, oh, we gotta get rid of these old <coughs> members. I'll tell you what, you learn stuff from old members. They're not always right, but I'll tell you what, they're writer, they're more right than some of the young members. And they do their book work. And I've been watching these common council meetings, not once, but I'll watch them two, three times. And I watch the younger common council members. I believe there's sometimes they don't even do background. It's just that automatic, we either vote for this or we don't vote for it. You gotta do background. We're entrusting you people to run the city. These uh, meetings we have for input, they're fine. They should have input but it comes up to the mayor and the common council. You run this city and you run it according to priorities. Priorities are police, fire, and right down the line. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> That's it. <clears throat> Next we have a Brief comments from City Clerk Susan Richards. Thank you, Mayor. Excuse me, this is not on the agenda, but I've allowed uh, our City Clerk to comment. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, actually, I was going to um, ask something of the older persons tonight, but in fact, I'm going to thank you instead. Um, I found in the last months that with the increase in documents that we've been getting in, we're averaging over 100 documents every two weeks and finding it challenging for all of you to get signatures done before we start at seven o'clock. So I was going to suggest that perhaps you could be here at quarter to seven and you all are here at 6.30 tonight, so I'm thrilled. So that was my comment, is it's gonna be a little bit harder on all of you to get your documents signed. So if you could maybe do like you did tonight and be here at least by quarter to seven, I would appreciate it. That's all I had, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Susan. Next we have certificates of recognition for Officer Milani Schmidt. Firefighter Gary Kohlberg and Andrew Kahalov. Kahalov. I'd ask that all three, if they are present, to please step up. Okay. The first recognition will be uh, presented.
presented to Officer Melanie Schmidt. And I'd just like to read from the uh, police incident report. This will give you, this will give you an idea of what, what happened. She was asked to, she was dispatched, dispatched to an incident and dispatch advised that they received a call from 911, call from Mother Hubbard's indicating that the owner had collapsed and he was not breathing. She was advised by dispatch that CPR was being done. Upon her arrival, she did make contact in the bar with the victim, Michael J. Hubbard. Uh, Mr. Hubbard was lying on his back and it was obvious that he was not breathing. She did uh, get her AED and placed the patches in the correct position after the AED was analyzing. I, she, did, she did administer one shock at the prompt. It doesn't sound like much to the average citizen, but Officer Melanie Schmidt saved a life. And this is so critically important. Officer Smith, we are proud to have you on the force. This certificate of recognition is presented to Officer Melanie Smith in recognition of saving the life of a citizen on June 30th, 2005 by successfully performing automatic external defibrillation. I commend your efforts and issue this certificate, certificate and affix my seal and signature upon it. Thank you very much. The Next certificate of recognition goes to uh, Mr. Andrew Kehalov. Kehalov? Kehalov, okay. Please forgive me. He is the one that performed CPR on Michael Hubbard. And again, had it not been for Mr. Kehalov, Kehalov, Mr. Hubbard may not be alive today. And this is the kind of action that we truly hold remarkable and we appreciate from average citizens in our community. Thank you very much, sir. And this certificate of appreciation is uh, presented to Mr. Andrew Kaloff in recognition of helping to save the life of a citizen on June 30th, 2005 by performing coronary pulmonary resuscitation. I commend your efforts and issue this certificate and affix my seal and signature upon it. Thank you, sir. The next uh, recognition goes to uh, one of our firefighters, and here again, to a lot of people, what he did may not mean a lot because this happened in a foreign country, but it does mean a lot. It means a lot to us, it means a lot to your colleagues, it means a lot to this administration, but it meant a tremendous amount of a lot to the, the parents of the girl that he helped rescue. And I'd like to read some excerpts from the letter that was sent to my office, actually to Chief Zyre's office, and, for, and copied to me. And I'll read just little parts of it. Gary came to our rescue in a situation that was terrifying to us. Our 60-year-old daughter, Whitney, fell 14 to 15 feet from a window ledge, landing on her back in a patch of wild vegetation, insect-ridden dirt, and even rocks. Gary, vacationing in the nearby pool, heard the cries and immediately vaulted the fence to jump into this area and told us he was an EMT, asking if he could be of help. His quick, clear thinking assessed witness condition, then this gentle, comforting voice began to reassure not only this hurting and terrified child, but her equally terrified parents. He stayed with us more than an hour. Through the remainder of our stay in the resort, every time we saw the Kohlbergs, Gary inquired about Whitney's health and well-being. This is a gentleman, a firefighter that truly cares about human beings, truly cares about people, and we are proud to have you as part of our force, sir. And again, the certificate of recognition presented to the lead firefighter, Gary Kohlberg, in recognition of rescuing a six-year-old child who had fallen from a window ledge at a resort in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Your prompt assessment of the child's condition and reassurance to her family while you were on vacation is a testament of your commitment to your profession. I commend your efforts and issue the certificate and affix my seal and signature upon it. Once again, thank you, sir.
and a special thanks and congratulations to both Chief Sire and uh, Chief Kirk for their role too in training. Next we have Mayor, uh, the Mayor's report and Finance Director's report regarding the 206 budget. We're hoping to move pretty quickly through this. If any aldermen have any questions, you're absolutely uh, entitled to ask. Or if you'd like to write your questions, you can always direct those questions to either myself or Mr. Gebhardt. But what we're going to do is go, and I believe each of you have a copy of it. Does any, is there anyone that does not? Any alderman? Okay. What we're going to do is go through the, the 206 general fund revenues that we're anticipating, the expenditures that we're anticipating. And we'll talk a little bit about the 207 fund revenues that we can expect and the 207 expenditures that we can anticipate. Mr. Gephardt will also talk a little bit about the 206, 207 library fund and transit fund levies, a little bit about the 206 debt service fund expenditures and the tax levy, and a little bit about the 207 also, and then the estimated tax levy increase for the 206 budget. And we're doing this as a subsequent, as a as a follow-up to a meeting that I had in the office with uh, Mr. Gebhardt and myself and two aldermen at a time to try to give the aldermen an idea of what we face with this 206 budget and what we actually face with the 207 budget. A lot of the activity that's going to occur with the 206 budget we can almost trace to the 207 budget. Things aren't going to get any better in 07. Uh, that's all we're trying to do, just give you an idea of where we're at. And again, if you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to ask. Mr. Gebhardt has asked that you write those questions down and ask them towards the end so that we can keep this presentation moving smoothly. And then if you don't have want to ask questions tonight, you can always direct those questions to me or Mr. Gebhardt <coughs> tomorrow or any other day. Thank you. Mr. Gebhardt. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good evening. Uh, on the 2006 general fund revenue estimates, uh, the state of Wisconsin has placed a 3.3% limit on the increase in the tax levy for the operating funds, which includes the general fund, the library fund, and the transit fund. If the tax levy for each of these funds increases 3.3%, the tax levy for the general fund would increase 448000 With the state shared revenues frozen at the previous level, the other general fund revenues are estimated to increase 192000 mainly from the increase in the estimate for interest earnings. The total increase in the estimate for 2006 general fund revenues then is 640000 So this is the maximum that we're looking at right now for the general fund to be able to increase. On the 2006 general fund expenditures, uh, the departmental request for appropriations for 2006 budget total 36.6 million, which is an increase of 2.6 million or 7.8%. The request do include $818,000 for capital outlay for various equipment, including squad cars. Funding of 300,000 is available from the cable fund for 2006 that would be transferred to the general fund for this purpose. Uh, therefore, the request for the equi equipment would have to be reduced by over a half million dollars. The wage increases based on the city's offer, uh, the benefit in, benefits based on 2006 rates for health increases or pension increases, and other increases relating to the cost of energy and various expenditures are estimated to increase $1.2 million. The funding that would be available would be $340,000 that the city can designate for a salary trust contingency that would be available for the um, City's offer in reference to the wage increase. The cost of potential arbitration awards uh, for the general fund is estimated at 563000 That would be additional on top of what we just referred to. Uh, total adjustments that would be required to match the appropriations that have been requested to the available funding are just under $2 million. After this amount of adjustments uh, would be attained, the general fund budget would be increased about one the increase in the general fund budget would be about 1.9%, just under, under 2%. Uh, I will now re re return the uh, presentation to the mayor who will address the 2007 revenues and expenditure projections. Thank you, Mr. Gebhardt. Some of this language can get a little technical, a little strange, so if you would like for Mr. Gebhardt or myself to put it in plain language, uh, please let us know. I think, I think most of you, all of you understand. 
Uh, the 207 general revenues that we can be looking at, as I said, pretty much mirror what we're looking at, what we're looking at this year. The state of Wisconsin restraints on the levy are expected to be at a 2.2%. Uh, uh, in this case, it's going to give us about $277,000, 489 for the 207 budget. That's going to be considerably less than we're expecting now at the point at the 3.339%, which would give us a little bit under half a million or right about the half a million uh, amount. So we can expect that amount to be less next year. Compound that lack of revenue with the vehicle registration fee, which is commonly called the wheel tax, that is scheduled for elimination. Uh, it's scheduled to phase out in 207, and that will translate to a 210,000 decrease in our general revenue fund. Now, it's, at some point, we have to make up that deficit some, from somewhere else. There's only so much money to go around, so we're going to have to shift it from somewhere else to cover the cost that that particular account has been paying for. We can also expect shared revenues to continue to remain frozen for 207. For the last two years, the state has told us that they're not, they're not going to give us any more revenue sharing, but they're not going to give us any less. So we, we plan accordingly. They've told us that for the next two years, 06 and 07, so we have to plan accordingly also. We can expect uh, the shared revenue to remain pretty flat for the 207. Uh, the 207 expenditures are going to be a little heftier for us because as, as we see our revenue staying at one level, not really going up, our expenditures keep going up automatically every year. We have certain things that occur automatically. Energy costs, we have uh, wages and salary, insurance premiums, all these things go up automatically whether our revenues go up or not. So we can expect that the, the expenditures that went up this year without the revenue going up we're going to go up again next year. Those are the, the adjustments that we're going to have to be making as, as the, um, throughout the departments. The additional operating costs will be incurred from the new building projects for their uh, utility and the maintenance costs. So that's how we're going to have to work that in. We have uh, little or no revenue growth in 207, uh, and any cost increase, as I said, is going to come from somewhere. And this is where I'm going to rely on department heads and hopefully uh, the union representatives to help us sort through this problem. It's very important that, 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 I, that I make very clear, nobody is trying to sabotage any department, nobody's trying to sabotage any union. I believe in the things that are being proposed. The, the fire station needs to be built, the, fire, the police station needs to be built, the, the municipal court we could use at some point. All I'm trying to do is find the money to pay for it. It's all I'm trying to do. That's my job. At some point in time, some people may not like me for that, but that's the price I have to pay for being mayor. And I will continue to do that for the, better, for the betterment of the entire community and, and the city. At this point, I will pass it on back to Mr. Gebhardt. Alan McGraw. Thank you, Governor. One thing that you did miss under the 2007 general fund revenues is uh, the cable franchise fee in 2007, uh, which is a very important aspect if, um, if the, uh, the feds do um, what they're talking about. Doing. Right. There, thank you, Alan McGraw. Just, there is federal legislation pending right now that may do away with our cable franchise fees. If that should occur, that translates to about $400, $410,000. About 300 of those thousand dollars are used for capital outlay. Now, people would ask, well, what does that mean? That means that we're, that's the money we've been using for, for squad cars. So if we lose that because of the federal legislation that they eliminate uh, that uh, cable franchise fees, again, that's revenue that we had coming in. We lose it. It's got to be made up from somewhere. And as I've indicated, we don't have a lot of sources to go to get more revenue from. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Mr. Gephardt. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in 2006, the uh, tax levy for the library fund uh, under the restraints would be about $84,000, and uh, for the transit fund, it would be about $21,000. In two, uh, 2007, as the mayor referred to, we're looking at the minimum level of a 2% increase, and library would be looking at about a $56,000 increase in their levy, and transit about $13,000. Uh, in reviewing the uh, debt service fund expenditures and tax levy for 2006, 
the principal and interest payment schedule for our existing debt will require an increase in the tax levy of 382000 The future debt issues for 2006 that are included with the request would require tax levy increases of 332000 for a six-month interest payment for a $13.3 million bond issue for the police facility and 73000 for a six-month interest payment for a $3 million note issue for the other projects in the capital improvements program. The total increase in the tax levy for the debt service fund for all six budget would be 787,000. Looking ahead to 2007 for the debt service expenditures. Uh, in 2007, the debt issues for the police facility and the 2006 capital improvements program would now require 12 months interest payments, which again would increase it by the budget by 332,000 for the police facility and 73,000 for the other program. In addition to the interest payments, uh, 2006 capital improvements issue would require a minimum principal payment of $200,000 in 2007. The state trust loan for the fire station will require principal and interest payments of over 100,000 in 2007. With an increase of 300,000 for the city's current debt, the debt service tax levy would have to increase approximately $1 million for the 2007 budget. To summarize the estimate, <clears throat> excuse me, tax levy increase uh, for 2006, we'd be looking at the tax levy for the general fund, library, transit, would increase 553,000. The tax levy for the existing and future debt service requirements would increase 787,000. So the total tax levy increase we're looking at is 1.3 million, which is an increase of 6.8%. 59% of this tax levy increase would be for past and future debt issues. The assessed values are estimated to increase by 2%, which would increase, would create a tax rate increase of approximately 4.8% or an increase of approximately 51 cents per thousand of assessed value. I don't have it on there, but if we were to look at summarizing the debt increase for 2007, uh, the total would be somewhat similar, uh, only you'd have a, a, the allocation would be about 300,000 for operating, about 1 million for uh, increase in, in debt service. So you still have about a $1.3 million increase for um, the tax levy for 2007, again, about between 6 and 7% increase. On that third bullet point uh, on the last page, the estimated tax levy increase, the mill rate of 51 cents per thousand of assessed value translates to an additional about $50, $50 per $100,000 home for the average homeowner in Sheboygan added on to their tax bill next year. Are there any questions for Mr. Gabbard or myself? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I noticed that if we do the issuance next year for the total of $1.3 million, you're saying that there's a 59% increase, or 59% of the tax levy increase will be for debt. So that means 41% of the tax levy would be for operating expenses. I'm just curious, what is the normal amount of debt service for a city of our size is almost 60 percent is that normal or what would be normal well, th this again to clarify would be the ratio of the increase in the tax levy uh, and i would say on that basis of probably 25 to 30 percent of the increase would probably be normal for the increase for debt service okay thank you very much mr gephardt <coughs> Moving along, we have a public hearing. One hearing, it is, please note that hearing number two has been, uh, will be held for the ninth, uh, 19th meeting. We do have a hearing on th the first uh, item there, and that's for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements at 832 Michigan Avenue and 1125 Michigan Avenue. Are there any interested parties that wish, it, that wish to be heard? Are there any 
interested parties that wish to be heard? Is there anyone that would like to speak regarding the public hearing? Alderman Graff? Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearing be closed. There is a motion and a second to close the hearing. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion passes. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda 11 1 through 11 22. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, before we do the consent agenda, I'd like to pull forward two documents. Document 1161 and 62. I believe there's um, quite a few people up here that may be interested in that. And um, Are you taking both at the same time? Yes. 1161 and 62? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You got it? You got it? Yep. Okay, please proceed, Alderman Groff. Uh, then I'd move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion. Is there a second? second. There's a second. Second. Under discussion? Under Alderman discussion, Grove. Your Honor, uh, if I may. Uh, going back to when this came out of um, finance, these two documents uh, were, uh, four members of finance were present. Uh, the two resolutions were, were presented and uh, we voted and it was a, it ended up being three to one so that these would move out of, out of finance and be brought to council. Since they have been brought to council, um, I received many calls regarding them and what needs to be done. Uh, uh, what I had told many people that I did speak to is that um, I was going to write down the pros and cons of everything and uh, come up with my own list and uh, decide what needed to be done based on, on that and the input I received from the, the taxpayers. Well, after all that happened, uh, it took till late last night and um, this morning again when I received a call from my daughter who is in the process of, of buying a, a condo that's in the process of being built. And, um, with her um, questions to me as what she should do and so forth, I thought, um, well, let me add that to, um, to some of my pros and cons. And my pros and cons are, uh, are a long list of uh, pros, for instance, are it's a low cost, uh, the Kohler donation, um, the faster response time. Uh, if, if we uh, develop an ambulance that moves into the fire station, uh, that would be, a, the station would be a, a great place to have it. Um, this is something that management and some staff want, um, and that the, um, the um, department can and has proposed an operating plan to, to have this fifth station. The cons were um, we need to, um, if we need to hire new firefighters, uh, if, we, um, if we could share um, a station by waiting with the town of Wilson, which has been brought up. Um, the increase in operational costs uh, were not budgeted or were not included in the, in the um, original dollars. Uh, uh, the firefighters, when they were up here uh, the previous time, uh, they had uh, expressed the need for more men and so forth. And um, if we need to offset budgets and so forth, in 2006 and 2007, we're looking at layoffs. Um, and then there's the arbitration award <clears throat> that could be coming in addition. Uh, uh, the additional debt for 2007. Well, with that, my daughter had asked the question, well, what should she do? Should she do this now or should she uh, not? And then this morning when, uh, when I spoke with her, uh, and she brought up the fact that she was told that she needs to make a decision pretty soon because the cost of construction of this condo that she's looking at could raise by as much as 20% because of um, Katrina. And we all have that to look at, too, regarding the response, uh, regarding what's happening in New Orleans. And, and what we all can and should be doing. Based on that alone, uh, I'm looking at this saying, well, okay, if the cost of this station is gonna increase by all that, then rather be, than being a, a penny wise and pound foolish, I think at this time, even though it's a, coming out of finance as a, as a positive saying, please postpone this, um, this station, I would at this time ask that the, the aldermen um, vote that down, vote this motion down that I just made and ask that um, we, uh, we uh, do a motion to, to file this document and move ahead with the police station because at this time, I think it's the wisest thing to do. Oh, excuse me, fire station, uh, because it's the wisest thing to do. Um, the, um, the, uh, then at the same time, I would ask that uh, rather than hold things up, because I know 
costs are probably increasing as we're speaking. Uh, there's two additional documents on the agenda this evening, uh, 1159 and 1170, both documents um, were supposed to be referred to public protection and safety. <clears throat> I'd ask that, um, that uh, maybe somebody, well, what we could do is um, uh, ask for um, suspension of the rules and vote on those and act on those tonight and therefore get moving, award the contract to the lowest bidder and uh, move forward with the fire station and um, get it built at these hopefully reduced costs that are probably only guaranteed for the next 30 days. Thank you, Alderman Graff. When the time comes, I'll ask you to take the lead on those motions, please. Alderman Kittleson. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to, to reiterate I feel strongly that in the best interest of public protection and safety uh, for the citizens of Sheboygan that we would be making a big, big mistake if we didn't go forward and build this new fire station. So I, I, uh, I thank Alderman Graff for his, uh, for his words. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Segali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also thank Alderman Graff, but then of course he's in the area where it would be built. So um, uh, I just, um, I think it's really very necessary um, with that new whole area going out where the 130 homes, et cetera, and what is taking now place out there on the south side, I think that area is in desperate need of, of a new fire station. Weedon Creek and OK has seen their several horrific accidents, I think, and a better response time there would, uh, would have uh, benefited the people. Um, so I do think in that uh, Alderman Davis is in agreement with me, since that's our district, that we sure would like it. We thank Alderman Graff, and we would be voting for the new fire station. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Segali. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. If this is the proper time, I'd like to make a motion to file Resolution 1161 and 1162. There's a motion, the second to file 61 and 62. Any discussion? Sue, please call the roll. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, this would be to file both of the documents. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Um, Alderman Berg. Go ahead. No, I would just go ahead. Alderman Berg. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to bring forward documents 1159 and 1170, please. 1159. We will act on 1159 first. Please proceed, sir. I would ask for a suspension of the rules then. Second. There's a motion to suspend the rules. Is there any objection? There be a non. Please proceed. Okay, I ask this council here for, uh, to have a voice vote on passing document 1159. Thank you. It would be to accept and file. There's a mo your, uh, motion to accept and file 1159. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I agree also that we do need um, excellent fire coverage on the south side of Sheboygan. I do have some concerns, though, in regards to um, the lack of communication with the town of Wilson um, with getting them to pay for a portion of this because um, with the um, reciprocity um, when they have a big fire, being that they have a volunteer fire department, we will automatically send the help and um, they don't have to pay for it. So I don't think it's right that we build something on the edge of town without getting um, the, the people on the other side of the street to help pay for it. Um, some of the words in document 1162, which we just filed, just are so important here. It talks about um, the state has frozen the shared revenue payments and the legislature has uh, approved tax levy restraints. And whereas a fifth fire station would add additional operating expenditures and principal and interest payments to the future budgets. And ultimately, there's the potential for service reductions and employee layoffs. And I just don't know if it makes sense to build a building and then next year or the year after, we have to be faced with, well, how are we going to downsize the fire department now 
and which, which department are we going to close? I'm thinking that ultimately what we're going to wind up doing is closing one of the other stations if we go ahead and build this one, and it just doesn't make much sense. Um, I understand the point as far as uh, the hurricane driving up the building expenses, and I do agree that $700,000 is not the most expensive project that I've seen um, come this way, and I think it's actually a very reasonable project. But when you're looking at what it's going to do to the, the taxpayers, I think it's going to increase the taxes just too much more than what the taxpayers can afford at this point in time, so I will have to vote against um, moving ahead with this project. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I agree with Alderman Groff. Now is the time to do it because of money problems. I agree with Alderman Susha that now is t the time not to do it because of money problems. However, I do think that we have the need. I think the citizens of Sheboygan support this fire station, and that's what make, influences me the most. But remember, citizens, we may be coming to you for money in the future. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to open up the floor, please, to um, Chief Sire to uh, do if he could answer some of the questions that uh, Alderman Shusha had. Second. There's a motion from the floor to open up the floor for Chief Sire. Yes, Alderman. Being a department head, you don't have to open the floor. It, you just speak. Chief Sire. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Mayor Red Red Red. Red. I have a council member. Uh, I come before you, thank you, first of all, for your consideration to voting on uh, the station tonight. Um, it's been a long and hard three years for this department. And to try and do the best thing that we can for the citizens of Sheboygan. In answering uh, Alderman Susha's uh, questions, I can say this. Number one, that first of all, in my 33 years in this department, I think we responded mutual aid to any township, I think one time for extrication and maybe one time uh, for cutting a, a guardrail. The volunteer departments have come to our aid in the city of Sheboygan for numerous fires, major fires, the Prangy Fire, Thonay Fire, brought many men, but they spent a lot of hours helping us and we never paid them a penny either. We have not gone that way yet. This station will open the door to those talks. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be attending a meeting with the mayor in the near future and county fire chiefs in looking at sharing services. It's kind of hard to ask to share a service until you have something to share. I think we've put the step forward. The, I believe the town chairman, and the fire chief of the town of Wilson, think this is a good project. It's right for the city of Sheboygan. I think it opens the door to do that. I can tell you that in other, other municipalities like the city of Merrill, Janesville, and other cities are contracting out to the townships to provide emergency medical support and fire support and have a yearly contract basis. That's something that we will be able to look forward to now when that station's there and open the door to any uh, surrounding township. As far as staffing, this staff, which is unanimous in the decision on building the station, has looked at staffing. We've been, we've been players in the last three years in our budget. Matter of fact, when this prop, uh, uh, proposal was brought forth by us in 2002, we were scheduled for that year for $100,000 in vehicle replacement. We were scheduled for $100,000 in 2004 vehicle replacement. We were scheduled for $125,000 this year. Over $250,000 we gave up through the capital improvements project to make this project a goal. And with that in mind, we knew that we would need vehicles and we had to alter our schedule. We went forth and got grants in the last three years of over $350,000 of vehicle and, and equipment. And we we're scheduled for another $100,000 this year. For a grand total of $750,000, we've basically in the last three years funded this project by hard work and dedication and commitment. And I thank you, if the vote goes the way I think it's going to tonight, for giving the citizens the right in the South Side to receive the same services as the South Side. You have now, by passing this tonight, if you pass it, you will give a tool to the firefighters that they can respond to the needs in a proper response time. And uh, I'll answer any other questions you have. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Alderman Ratke, you are next, sir. None. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think under the circumstances, I'd be remiss if I, I didn't thank the Chief for his years of service. After what you said this evening with his upcoming retirement, he showed us again tonight that, you know, that he really cares about the citizens and his employees. 
And I think that's one more reason why we have to pass this. Um, I also want to thank you and Mr. Gebhardt for your involvement in the budget process and making us aware of the difficulties going forward and particularly getting it out to the public. You know, I, as someone who sat on finance, I've heard Rich Gebhardt you know, for four years say, yeah, whenever we build this police station, it's not going to be good. So I think that most of the older people who've done their homework, we know the projections, we know what's out there, we know sometimes stuff happens that you don't know about. We sold acres and made $500,000 two weeks ago. We've got land in the town of Sheboygan. It's all one-time money, but so is building something. It's one-time money. So I think it's good that you're getting the community the knowledge that we have. And I applaud you in that. You know, I, I just I, I thought it was ironic that we heard tonight from some of the people who said we've changed our minds. That's what some of the people in the community say to me. If they, They're not going to yell at me anymore because they figure in three months we'll change our mind and then they'll get their way. You know, and I think we have to be, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and we have to be big enough to say we did and move forward, but I think we also have to realize we can't spend our entire day thinking back of what we did in the past. We have to move forward. We've got real problems. We need real solutions. And I think this is something that definitely needs to move forward. I just wanted to comment on the capital improvements and priorities. I sat on capital improvements, I believe, two, three years as a citizen and two years as an older person. And I, you know, I can remember Tom Holton saying, yep, the year we build a police station, we won't be building many roads. Well, now we should move it out two more years. Where in the capital improvements that I saw, and it's not approved, there's like a million dollars for parks. I don't take a backseat to anybody in this council in supporting parks. I've always supported parks. I can remember Alderman Graff and I arguing about the lights at Wildwood Park. But if you have a choice of building a splash pad at End Park, or a police station or a fire station, I think that's where we need the priorities. And I'm, I'm confident this council, when the push comes to shove, they'll figure that out. And I'm happy that even tonight, many of them have seen the light to support this project. So I, I think moving it forward is the correct decision. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. I would just like the chief to comment about operating costs, utility costs, and uh, maintenance costs. I already know the answers, but I think they're, they're telling. Thank you, Mayor Manny, um, Honorable Mayor Perez, uh, committee me uh, council members. Um, we're, um, the operating cost for new fire station, uh, Deputy Chief Sharp put together some estimates on our four stations. It's about $1,000 a month to run that station, so it's about $12,000 a year. We have made a commitment to operate that station with the present personnel we have and the present equipment we have, and that's the way that I believe it's going to be done. And the future department, the Police and Fire Commission, has chosen to select the next chief from within the department, and with our entire department in, in support of this, that's the way we're moving forward. I'm not saying that when times get good, or if there's other revenue funding mechanisms within the fire department, like possibly the ambulance in 2008, that funding may come forth, like the city of Manitowoc, and bring on more personnel and pay for that and pay for and, and, and uh, create a revenue source for the city for year 2008. So uh, basically, uh, it's, uh, we maintain our own stations. Firefighters do their own maintain maintenance in the station. So it's basically the heat and light, which I've included in my budget. And I'll be talking to the mayor about next week. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, too, have been very torn on this issue. When I ran for this seat, I talked about fiscal responsibility, and that has been a major issue for me. I don't want to see city employees laid off. I don't want to see our taxes go up. But I don't want to see someone die because the fire department cannot get to their place in time. So hopefully, if we build it, the town of Wilson will come, and that will help us in some of our finances. So I will be supporting this. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this fire station is an example of what can be done with the proper planning. Um, and I support this 100%. Back in 1979, my folks built the house on the corner of South 18th Street and Fox Hill Road, except there's one problem. South 18th Street didn't exist down there at that point in time. Fish Creek was still where it was. Uh, today, there's a bridge going out there. Yes, that was to help the fire department get out there. But I believe, and Chief Zyre, correct me if I'm wrong, was it 1978, Chief Walt Rousey, was it? purchased a piece of property in the town of Wilson, anticipating future growth for the city of Sheboygan. Now here we have a project that was started you know, more than 20 years ago, or almost, you know, and it was the proper thing to do, it was proper planning and everything, and today we can follow through on a project that was started that long ago with the vision to serve the Southside residents, which we haven't done with the current one fire station because we're just 
un understaffed at that one station. If those guys are sitting way out there by Ramra Estates, that leaves the rest of us in the south side with nobody because all the rest of the stations are on the other end of town. And this is one project that once, just once, the city of Sheboygan actually is going to follow through on and do it the right way. Not, and I, I can't see turning back at this point in time, not after all these years and we've come this far. So it was, it was, a, it was the uh, vision of one fire chief many years ago that we're going to finish up on this evening. It was the proper planning and I can support this all the way. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with working on capital improvements, I've noticed that sometimes we seem to do things backwards as far as people will come in and they'll ask for a certain amount of money. And then you'll say, well, did you get any estimates? How do you know that's going to cost this much? How do you know that to build a, a shelter and bathrooms at King Park is going to run $300,000? How do you know this? And they just do without having any estimates. You know, we just heard the fire chief say that, you know, after we build it, then we will contract potentially with the town of Wilson. Well, I'd like to start seeing the city do it the opposite way. You know, first get the estimates before you come to capital improvements and ask for the money. And as far as building the fire station, I think that we should have worked with the town of Wilson, got the contract in place first, and then you build the firehouse because now why would they enter into a contract? Because of mutual aid, we have to go and cover a fire if they need our help. I mean, I just think we're sometimes doing things backwards, and I would just challenge all the department heads in the future to try to do it the other way, because I think it would make more sense to the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Chief. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May, may I speak one more time? I think it's both please, twice. Please, okay. one more time. Um, I guess I'm not worried about the town of Wilson at the present time. I'm worried about the people in that area now and with the new area that's going out there now. Uh, the town of Wilson, I'm sure that the new fire chief and them will probably get together and like you said, would be discussing it. But we, we, we need that station now. We need to protect the people who have not been protected. We need to have it now. And um, town of Wilson can come, but I think we need that station at the same time we're talking to town of Wilson. Thank you. Chief Zier, you had a comment, sir? Yes, sir. Mayor Perez, Elder, Council Pearsons. I need to address the statement inspired Elder Masusha. 33 years ago, I sat in that corner, raised my hand, took an oath to serve the city, to give my life if I have to. It was to the citizens of Sheboygan. They paid the bill for 33 years. Five years ago, I stood in that and said, to my best of my ability as fire chief, I will support the statutes. I will look into supporting whatever is the best for the citizens of Sheboygan who pay the bill. The town of Wilson is a plus. I represent the city of Sheboygan. Those people on the south side are under my jurisdiction for their life and safety, and I brought the proposal forth for that reason. Anything we get on the, above and beyond is a plus. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And just to close and comment real quickly, I too support building a fire station. I always have. And I do encourage the aldermen to vote for it. But I equally encourage you to help me find that money, to shift that money, because we're going to shift money when that debt issue is out there, and we're going to have to meet that obligation. I ask the department heads, the council, and the unions to work with me so that we can make the necessary adjustments on that budget that are going to be fair and equitable to everyone. And I know we can do that. But I'm asking everyone to put it to heart that that's what we're going to do together as a team. We will call the vote. Please call the roll. And this would be to accept and file the RO by the purchasing agent number 1159. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Alderman DeBerg. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Now on document 1170, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage, please. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 1170 upon its passage under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. 
Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, no. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and Deberg. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Consent agenda. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, consent agenda consisting of documents 11 1 through 11 22. I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and the general ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Motion a second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what I'd like to do is um, pull document number 1120 and refer that to finance. Um, there's already a similar doc document 1160, and it just looks like it should be reviewed by finance before we vote on it. Any objection to that? 1120 will be referred to finance. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. Um, document 1119 for discussion purposes only. This please, is uh, a Please continue. I'm sorry. Please continue, sir. This is a commendation basically to the city of Sheboygan, and I'd like to read it if I could, please. Please do. That the uh, Public Works Committee did meet and discuss the 2004 Compliance Maintenance Annual Report from the Wisconsin DNR giving the wastewater treatment plant a perfect score of 4.0. The CMAR is an annual self-evaluation of the wastewater treatment plant collection system and associated wastewater management activities. The letter states that the Sheboygan wastewater treatment plant has a very effective operation. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. <clears throat> we will take a vote on consent agenda 11-1 through 11-22 with the exception of 11-20 that will be referred to finance. Please call the roll. Serta. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Sigali, Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. and Eber. 16 eyes. Motion carries. Communication and petitions 1123 to 1131 to be referred. Report of officers, 1132 by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners recommending filing resolution by Alderman Berg authorizing the study of establishing pet friendly areas in city parks within the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and file 1132. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1133 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Board of Commissioners of Public Land sta stating that the loan application to construct a fire, fire station has been conditionally approved and has been forwarded to the Office of the Attorney General for legal review. I'll let Alderman uh, Groff. Yeah, yeah and I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Sorry. There's a motion and a second to accept and file 1133 under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1134 will lie over. 1135 through 1159 will be referred, except, let me make some notes here. 1135, the year has changed. 205 will change to 206. 1139 will be referred not to public works, but to the Marina and Harbor Committee. 1144 will be referred to all those committees listed and now we'll add public works. 1145 will be referred to City Plan Commission and Committee of the Whole. Moving along. And 1159 was already acted on. Is there a Alderman uh, Ebert. Yes, a question on 1141, which is from the Sheboygan Lodging Group, uh, requesting uh, basically a reevaluation of the chamber contract. Uh, I guess uh, one question is, uh, will we have a committee of the whole meeting shortly? The uh, reason I mention that is that the, uh, the Salary and Grievance Committee will be looking at the table of organization with the additions and on their Wednesday meeting, 
And I think the request will be then to go and advertise for the position. This serves as somewhat of a cloud, if you would, over mm -hmm. that action. And I don't think we want to uh, get in the situation of approving something and then coming back and not approving it at the next meeting. So I think it would be timely. Would that be perhaps next Monday? Yes. Uh, I think that'll, that'll allow us the opportunity to do that pending that vote. Thank you. That is a very good point, Alderman Byrd. Thank you. Can I just address that? Honestly? Yes. Um, um, Alderman Clark? Berg, just to give you for information, this document was actually handed to me as their presentation from the last meeting, so it's kind of catching up. So it's not a brand new one. It's it's a, new. No, just so you know. Okay. Okay, those 1135, 1159, again, will be referred. 11, uh, as I said earlier, 1159 was has already been accepted and filed. 1160, resolutions introduced. 1160 by Alderman Graf, amending the administrative services agreement between the City of Sheboygan and the ICMA RC Retirement Corporation for plan number 300763. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that that resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to put uh, 1160 upon its passage under discussion. There being on, I'm sorry, Alderman Susha. I'm wondering if Alderman Graf could explain this a little bit more um, in regards to, is this funded by the city or is it funded by the employees? I'm going to let Rich Gephardt uh, explain it um, as he's the expert. Mr. Gephardt, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is a deferred compensation plan for the employees that they invest their funds into and pay fees to ICMA. And what this amendment is, is to lower the fees that the em employees will pay. Basically, they would not pay the direct administration fees. They'd be paying the fees per fund. Um, but it would save the employees on an average about $175 per year. But it's the fees are totally paid by the employees. Uh, none of it is, in the past has been paid by the city. Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Eleven sixty-one and sixty-two have already been po forward and filed. Eleven sixty. I'm sorry. We need to have a vote on eleven sixty. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't no, we, okay. didn't, we didn't take a vote. No. That's right. <laughs> we didn't take a vote. Eleven sixty. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. 1163 by Alderman Radke, authorizing Scott Lewandowski to serve as a volunteer ass assistant city historian. <clears throat> Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we uh, uh, put the resolution. resolution. Put the resolution upon its passage. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to put 1163 upon its passage. Under discussion? Alderman Manderwheel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this would be to anybody who can answer it, if there's anybody here tonight. If anybody else will come forward and ask to be a volunteer assistant to the city historian, do we only have room for one? Or have we gone out there and said, you know, anybody who's a historian, are they interested in that position? I was just curious if, if we would have five assistants or one assistant, what we were looking at on that. My, my, my position would be one assistant. That's usually, usually the way it's handled. What I did is I contacted uh, former Alderman Wagaman and asked him if he was interested at all in having a, an assistant. I doubt that if we asked him to, if he wants two or three more, he's going to say yes. I think uh, it would be a courtesy to him, since he is a city historian, to, to ask him. Uh, and quite frankly, if he wanted 30, I'd put it before you to, to give him that. But at the moment, he... Um, he was uh, content with one, and he said that he could use the services. There's a lot of work that, uh, that he's working on, and there's a special project, if you will recall, that we are hoping to honor all the mayors part-time that have never been honored, and that requires some considerable um, research. And it's, all Mr. Wagaman did not have a lot of time on his hands to do that. He writes a column for the paper also, so he asked for some help, and Mr. Lewandowski was most grateful to offer his assistance. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I read um, um, Scott's uh, 
background and uh, he's quite qualified to be assi assistant historian and being on the historical committee myself, I want to welcome him to the historical committee and then we do welcome his knowledge on this. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1164 will lie over, I'm sorry, will be referred to finance. 1165 and 66 will lie over. 1167 through 1173 will be referred. <coughs> Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull 1168, please. 1168, please proceed. I know that when you took over um, as our mayor and our ch council changed that there would be quite a few changes on the council. This one kind of, I guess my only words that could come to mind was kind of blew my mind. I don't think there is one older person here that does not dress with respect. I don't think any constituent has ever called to say that we don't dress properly. And I guess I feel that if anybody's gonna tell me what and what I cannot wear on a council meeting, Mr. Mayor, they need to take their checkbook out and I hope they have a hefty one because my clothes don't come cheap. Okay. So <laughs> I, I just think that this does not even need to be referred to the committee of the whole. I think I would like to suspend the rules and for us to vote on this right here and now. You can just make a motion to file it. I can just make a motion to file it. Then I move that we file this. Second. There's a motion second to file. If I may, Alderman Sigali, I will just quickly respond to your comment. I don't know if you're saying that I brought this forward. I did not bring this forward. This I was is, under the impression that you helped co-sponsor. Well, let me explain to you what happened. Just so that everybody understand what happened. Um, Alderman Bauman approached me and asked if if we should consider a dress code for the council. If any alderman approaches me and asks, should we consider, I will say, fine, would you like to author the resolution? He said that he would. I asked him if he wanted some help. He said yes. I put together a team of, uh, comprised of uh, Susan Hart, Mary Rajar, and Marie Ellis. Marie Ellis is our city assessor. She has an internal departmental dress code herself, and I felt that she was a, a good person to be there, and I was simply complying with the request of an alderman. I worry about how I dress. I think all of you will worry about how you dress. I worry about how much I spend for my clothes, and I think you will do the same thing. But it is unfair to insinuate that I had anything to do with it. It wasn't me. Okay? There's a motion to file. Discussion on the motion to file. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I will vote to file this because as of right now, if you're 18 years old, you can become an alderman. All you have to do is convince your district to vote for you. If we do this, you're saying you have to be 18 and able to dress a certain way, and I don't agree with that. A while ago, I heard a story about an alderman in the 70s that ran for alderman in Illinois. He was alderman for maybe two years until his term was up. And every time he came to council, he wore a cape, tights, and a shirt with an A on it, and he went as alderman. You know, if we're going to have that here and the people voted for him, the people have to have a problem with him. I don't think we should or the mayor should address that. I think the people should address that. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel, I just got through saying I'm not addressing that. This is not my resolution. Please. Um, what I was saying with that is if we would have this here, I was assuming that you would be the one to enforce it. I wasn't, no, I wasn't trying to say that you made this. I was just saying that you might be. I'm sorry, Alderman Vanderbilt, but the, the enforcement would lie on the city clerk. That, that's what the resolution says. <laughs> I did not. All I did, all I did, all I did was draft the resolution as asked to do. I did, if you read the resolution, which apparently you haven't, the enforcement lied on the city clerk. And that, that was because a, a suggestion was made that in the past, former city clerk, Pet Lowe's, was actually enforcing a city code. She would come and she was a little stern. 
She would come and say, you know, you need to wear some, you need to wear a tie or something like that. But I want to make it perfectly clear, this is not my doing. And I don't want to get blamed for something that I had nothing to do. All I was doing is honoring the request of an alderman, just like I will do for you and anybody else. Okay? Thank you. There's a motion to file. Did, did we take the vote already? Oh, please take the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, we didn't take and a roll. And we'll yet. take a roll call. Please call the roll. Thank you. This is to file the document. Davis. No. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 16 ayes. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving along, 1174, report of committee will be referred to public works, not capital improvements. Please make that notation. Report of committees, 1175, by public protection and safety, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from Gina Steinhardt regarding continuing issues with the trucks driving to Rock Line and May Line and not having proper signage. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And if it's all right with you, I'd like to take 1166, or 1176 and 77. Please um, do. Also, also from uh, Gina Steinhardt, um, submitting documentation regarding houses in her neighborhood in desperate need of various repairs. And also recommending filing document uh, 77, submitting a communication from Gina Steinhardt regarding the ongoing issues with garbage being allowed to pile up in backyards, on porches, stuck between garages, et cetera, in her neighborhood. Uh, make a motion to file. Second. A motion to second to file. Under discussion, Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I'd like to move uh, those three resolutions to uh, Committee to Hall. There's a motion and a second to refer all three. All three. Through Committee of the Whole. And who seconded? I'm sorry. Thank you. Under discussion. Alderman Sarah. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. The reason why these I had supported moving these documents to the Committee of the Whole is because um, Gina Steinhardt has contacted me and many of the individuals in this room, including the media, just talking about how she felt um, mistreated in that committee by the chairman and that she was not allowed to speak on her issue, but others within um, the room, even though she was on the agenda, um, she was never um, recognized by the chair and other individuals were able to speak on her issues other than herself. So um, by moving it to the committee of the whole, maybe she'll get a better, better treatment. Alderman Stefan? Oh yes, that was my question. I just didn't, nobody had contacted me apparently to tell me why we were gonna ask to do this or anything. I just wanted to know the reason. Okay, thank you. Alderman Susha? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, perhaps I can shed some light on the situation, and in the future, I do encourage aldermen, if you have questions about something that happens in a committee that I'm involved in, feel free to call me at home. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, basically, what, what happened is that we follow the Roberts Rules of Order, both in this council chamber and also at committee meetings. And it's expected that if somebody wants to speak, they need to raise their hand to be recognized. And that did not happen, not once did the person in these complaints raise her hand to be recognized. Instead, it was constantly interrupting the meeting, answering questions that the building inspectors were having among the two of them, um, putting feedback in places where she wasn't recognized, she did not have the floor. It was made clear to her three times that she did not have the floor. And when she um, interrupted the meeting the fourth time, she was not allowed to speak. The committee had her written words in numerous documents. We've got lots of letters uh, from this individual. And the decision was made uh, to basically file these documents, to send them to the committee of the whole. The end result is going to be the same. The motion is going to be made to file these documents. Thank you. Thank you, you Alderman Susha. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as, a, as a chairperson, I think it is the responsibility of the chair that obviously um, Mrs. Steinhardt was frustrated um, as explained by older person um, Susha here. If at any point, Alderman Susha maybe would have said, all you need to do is raise your hand, I think Gina Steinhardt would have took advantage of that. Okay, well we're gonna, this is being referred to Committee of the Whole. This can be hashed out at the Committee of the Whole. Otherwise, 
there's no need to refer it if you want to discuss it tonight. So, Alderman Van Akron. No, I'll change my mind. That's why I wanted to send it to Committee Hall so we don't discuss it here tonight. Very smart, sir. Because I've heard two different stories. I've heard from one, I went and got the, the tape and I listened to it myself. So that's when I will speak. Okay, we will take the vote on referring it to Committee of the Whole. That will be item 75. I'm sorry. Oh, 1175, 1176, and 1177. There has been a motion and a second to refer it back to Committee. All those in favor, you want a roll call? No. All those, you want a roll call? Please oh. call the roll. Okay, this is to refer back, refer to the Committee of the Whole, correct? Yes. Okay, and I vote, I vote, and I vote would be to refer. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Bradkey? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. I'm sorry, Aye. and Davis. Aye. 12 to 4. Motion carries. 1178 and to be referred to public works, not capital improvements. Paul McGrath? No, that's what I was going to ask. Okay, thank you, sir. And 1179 will be referred to Public Works also, not Capital, Improve not capital uh, Improvements Commission. Please note that. Report of Committee 1180 by Finance, reporting on the limited increase in the 205 tax levy for the 206 budget for the operation funds. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt 1180 under discussion. There be a non. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1181 to 1185 to be referred. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to call 1182 um, with, concerning reestablishing the salary for the position of all the persons in the city of Sheboygan. I guess we're talking about fiscal responsibility here, and at the present time, I really don't think that according to um, ordinance that um, the aldermen should be getting any kind of a raise. Um, the, we have problems with the fire department, police department, public works with their, with their um, uh, arbitration and that, and I just feel that to be fiscally responsible, I don't think that, the, that we as aldermen at this, at this time should be requesting um, an increase in, in, in our salary, so I would like to make a motion to file. There's a motion and a second to file 1182 under discussion. Alderman Berg. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. On the, on the referral, I think uh, typically statutorily every couple of years we look at this. Uh, you will notice that uh, the, I believe the 2006 remains the same as it has been over the last several years. 2007 is open. You can write zero in there if you wish because there's no number in there. The purpose is to get this into a committee and, uh, make a, and basically make a decision to report back to the full council. Under further discussion, Alderman Susha. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to put things into perspective, um, hypothetically speaking, if the alderman received a 10% pay increase, that would equate to about $9 a week. $9 a week increase, not $9 an hour. Um, but what I would like to see done is I would like to perhaps see Ed Cirk do a salary study on Alderman and Sheboygan. Uh, perhaps we're overpaid and maybe a decrease in our salary would be appropriate. And that's something that with the blank here, nobody ever thought of is that we should maybe look at decreasing our salary, not necessarily increasing it. So to file it on the floor without further investigation um, I think is somewhat foolish. Um, and another thing to keep in mind is to help recruit quality people in the future. If you keep the salary as low as it is, like I said, it's, it's rather hysterical. The 10% increase would be $9 more a week. Um, but I think you have to stay with the rate of inflation to a certain extent. I'm not saying we should have a 10% increase. Even if it's a 1.5% increase, you have to look in the future about the, the people that you'd be attracting. I mean, at the salary it is now, you're not going to get um, 
some of the people that have PhDs in the city to come and even apply for this because you don't do it for the money, but it's, it's not even covering some basic expenses uh, for some of the aldermen. So. Okay. The motion has been made to file Alderman Susha. If you'd like, you can speak to uh, chair, the chairman of the uh, salary and grievance. He'd be glad to put it on the agenda. Or you can introduce a resolution stating your wishes. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, one problem with filing this is that currently the resolution or the ordinance that's in place just goes through 2005. So there is no salary for 2006 or 2007. Uh, so if you'd want to keep it the same at the same level, uh, you'd need to put in 4668 for 2006 and 4668 for 2007. Otherwise, just filing this, uh, unless that's what you want to do, it means you don't get anything. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's what you want to do. I don't. I take it you want no salary, Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. So, you, uh, so Attorney McLean, what you're saying to us is there is no salary if we do nothing with this at this point in time. Is that what you're saying to us? Right now, oh, we just oh, Attorney McLean. Right, right now, there is no salary set for aldermanic positions for 2006 or. Any, any future year. If I may ask one more question on this, how often do they visit this area? Um, and I mean, people, what people don't realize out there, and I'm not saying that I want more money or anything, it's a difficult position to be put in to put, make your own raising things, but there are several expenses that we do incur that we are not reimbursed for, that this pretty much pays for itself for the expenses and things, but how often do they revisit the, uh, the uh, salaries and things for aldermen? And how they generally set set the rate is my question. Uh, the the history of this is uh, I think the last document uh, originally came in for uh, setting the salary for a number of years uh, I think seven or eight years that was cut back by the alderman to just I think three years three or four years uh, the last three years of which I think were forty six sixty eight uh, under. The ordinance, uh, 13 months before the election is up, is the time that the council has, a, has established for setting future salaries. You cannot statutorily vote to increase your own salary. So that's why I, I was asked to put this together just to get something in. Uh, that's why I put 4668 for 2006 because that reflects a zero increase. 2007, there would be new aldermen that would not be voting here tonight. So you'd be voting on future alderman salaries, not your own. So that's why I left that number blank. Uh, and I was requested to do this just to get something in so that the council could look at the issue. Uh, so even the 4668 didn't come from any place other than that's what you currently get as a salary. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, because I believe this is already on the salary and grievances agenda for Wednesday, um, I would respectfully request that the aldermen that um, voted to file this re withdraw their, their, um, their um, motion and let it go to, uh, to salary and grievance who will be discussing it on Wednesday night. And more than likely, we'll bring it back the same, but at least it'll set something up for both 06 and 07. Alderman Sigali, would you like to withdraw your motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Graf, my name is Alderman Sigali, and I will resend my motion. Did I say Thank you. You will or will not? I, I will. Withdraw yes, I will withdraw I'm sorry, did I call you something else? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not, let's not worry about that. I'll, uh, and there's a second. Who made the second? Withdraw too? Okay. Okay. Pardon me? will be referred to salary 1182, please understand, will go to salary and grievances. Matters laid over, 1053, resolution number 1050506 by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Montemeyer, Susha, and Davis authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. <clears throat> There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. 
Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Serta. Davis. Aye. And Graf. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 1062 General Ordinance Number 280506 by Alderman Vanderweel, Montemayor, Ratke, and Meyer relating to the no parking anytime so as to add the east side of North 10th Street from a point 153 feet south of the south curb line of Wisconsin Avenue to a point 100 feet south thereof. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Excuse me. I'll make a motion. Motion to put the general ordinance upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. Other, matter, other matters authorized by law 1186, an RO by finance director treasurer submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operation dates July 31st, 05, will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 1187, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Vandervoort Holding Company Incorporated stating that they are interested in the property the city has on Highway 42 just west of I-43 and would be interested in what the city has to offer in terms of a land swap of some sort that would benefit them and the city. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 1187 to accept and file 1187 under discussion. Alderman yep. Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to give an explanation to the public as to why you don't see me submitting a resolution. The last time at the council, I was told that I needed to submit a resolution in order for the city to um, make contact with Vandervart. I'm just happy and I'm pleased that the mayor took initiative um, and we had that meeting with Vandervart last week, Tuesday, and we have um, documentation from that meeting, which will be put forth, has been, to the elder persons, and so we can move forward with that. And it's a courtesy you attended, which is great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. 1188 will go to Public Works. 1189 will go to Finance. I'm sorry, what? Is that yours? 1187. Oh, we I need, don't think we did a vote on we that. Didn't, we didn't take a vote? We just know in all eyes. We just need an all eyes on Okay. 11, thank you. 1187. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. 1188 will go to Public Works. 1189 will go to Finance. 1190, a resolution by Alderman Vanderweel stating that the Common Council has every intention to build a new police facility. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to put the resolution upon his passage. There's a motion and a second to put 1190 upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. Under discussion, the reason I sent this in is because every day someone's asking me if we're going to build a new police station or not. I think if we're not going to do it, then we need to vote not to do it, or we need to vote to do it. We can't keep on questioning ourselves. I think we need to stop wasting money and time looking for a site if this council has no intentions of building a new facility. Waiting two years won't work because it's I don't think a new council is going to pick up. Most of us will be new at that point. <coughs> All I'm asking is to stop messing around, stop playing games, and let the people of Sheboygan know what the intentions are of this council. And uh, if you decide to change your mind, just explain it to the people. You know, like it was said earlier, sometimes we do change our minds. That happens. But I'm asking for a vote so the people know where we are at this point from the looking for a site to actually building a new facility. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman DeBerg. Thank you, Your Honor. Before Alderman uh, Ratke said with the fire department it was in the making for 20 years, good planning. Well, police department probably 40, 45 years in the planning. Now is the time for us to make our move and go ahead with this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Seva. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I think this resolution is definitely needed, not only for the citizens, but our police department. I almost feel like every time something comes up, we owe them an apology that we keep prolonging this issue. But you know, anytime I run into citizens, if there's one thing that everybody seems to be uniform on, that is build the police station. Um, I think they're also getting sick and tired that we're not putting this forward and doing it expediently. So I think this, this resolution couldn't have come in at a better time, and I'm gonna support it. Thank you, Alderman Sarah. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with Alderman Berg and Serta and Van Gerwille. I just think that this is time that we, we give um, respect due to the police station and to the citizens that we, they need to know, uh, the police need to know um, that, yeah, we're going to build this um, police station for them, and it's, it's time to do it now. So thank you. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think this is really fair to all of us um, being new on this council. When I came in, I knew we had financial problems in the city. But after meeting with the mayor last week, I realized we have major financial problems in our city. And for us to borrow this $13, $14 million and the possibility of increasing taxes and laying 60 city employees off in the next two years, I'm having a big problem with this. And to say we're going to build, does that mean we're going to leave out remodeling City Hall? Because to me, the fiscal way to go is going to be to remodel City Hall. Because we cannot afford 13, 14 million to be borrowing to build a brand new building. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Vanderbilt, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I purposely put a new police facility, and I purposely didn't put any money because if we can build it the cheapest we can, under eight million or whatever, and if we build it connected to the city hall or somehow with city hall, as long as it's a new facility, that's all I'm asking right now. Thank you, Alderman Hannah Wheel. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, I don't think there's an alderman here that doesn't think we need a new police station. The questions, of course, is where to build it and when. Um, after meeting with the mayor, like Alderperson Meyer had said, after looking at the numbers, the city is in worst, fisc worst financial situation than I ever thought. And building it next year just isn't feasible. And I, I think that we need to let the um, recommendation that came out of uh, capital improvements go through the process and um, look at this during the budgeting time. Um, rather than commit to something right now. It, I mean, this is a fine resolution. I just have a problem approving something that says that we promise not to delay the process where uh, financially it's, it's virtually impossible to move ahead with this next year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, one of the things I said when I ran for council was we need a new police station 50 years ago, and I still believe that to this day. This resolution here just kind of ties my hands and says, you got to do something, you have to do it now. Yeah, we need to do something now. Unfortunately, we got a lot of high numbers here. We have no certainty on the site. We got a lot of unanswered questions here to be, you know, saying here, we got to build this thing. I mean, what it is, it's time is we're going to build it right now. We have financial problems. I saw the piece of paper, the pie chart. I look at that every day. I think to myself, how are we going to do this? There's got to be a way to do this. And I think, and I think, and I think, and somewhere along the way, there's going to be a solution to get this done. But the first thing we need to do is look at reality, get a site, get the numbers together, then let's pass this and take it. I mean, we've been meeting Monday nights and things. This coming Monday night again, we're going to sit down and meet, go over these reports, and we'll sit down and figure out just exactly where we can go and what we have to do. But in the meantime, we don't need a resolution here to start pushing it even farther along. I mean, there's other issues to deal with besides worrying that we've made a promise now to the to the police department or the city or whatever that we're going to build we're going to build this thing it has to happen and it should have happened 50 years ago i mean the infrastructure of the city suffered long enough it needs to be done but this resolution doesn't help it thank you alderman retke alderman graf thank you your honor um when i read this in, in the agenda i had called alderman vanderwilly and um, asked him about the the third whereas and the fourth whereas and um those are the two i object to because being on capital improvements we discussed what we may have to do and what we may not have to do. And um, I'd rather wait to have the capital improvements go through the um, uh, planning department as well as through the finance and then back to council to make a decision. The um, 
the, the area. We may have to postpone it for six months. This would uh, bind our hands and we couldn't do anything for the six months. It may be that, um, for instance, with uh, us still looking at and considering the Vandervaart property and so forth, uh, what if they'd say, well, if you can hold off for a year, we'll do this, we'll do that, and would, oh, no, we got this ordinance here, we got to do something with that. Now, although that could be rescinded too, and then you're going to hear the same thing as over and over, that, uh, oh yeah, you made a decision, then all of a sudden you're changing your mind. Um, to do this at this time, I think, is a little premature, and I'd rather wait until after the capital improvements and the budget for 2006 gets set. Thank you, Alderman Grove. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Your Honor. I have some conflicting messages that I heard here tonight, and I'm wondering if you, Your Honor, can clarify this for me. Alderman May uh, Meyer, Alderman Sushin, Alderman Racky referred to meeting with you, which I met with you too, um, talking about the budget input sessions and these charts. Um, and I don't know if they're taking the message that you're not in support of this, because I came out of that out of your office too, and then given the, the statement made in the paper out of capital improvements, this is a promise that you said you had made, one of the promises you made. So I'm wondering if you can clarify that for the other older persons that seem to maybe mis misquoting you. And just lastly is I think, you know, we have gone around on this issue. It's like we've addressed three questions. Number one, do we need a police station? I think we've answered that. Number two, where should we put it, where we're at now? But now we seem to be asking this third question, can we put off on building it later? And with everything that we said about the fire department applies here. Can we afford to put this police station off any more in the future, and will it ever get done if we do? Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serda. To answer your question, <clears throat> when the issue of Sheridan Park came up, when there was a change in the council, when I became mayor, I made a very strong, stern statement. I said I will do everything I possibly can to save Sheridan Park. I said, in my mind, in my heart, Sheridan Park will not be destroyed. I can assure you and the public and the chief that I will do everything I possibly can to build this police station. In my mind, in my heart, this police station is going to get built. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do agree with Alder Person Serta that this issue we've gone over and over, and that's why I'd like to make a motion right now to call the question. Question is being called. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. <clears throat> Hold on. Uh, let's see here. Montemayor. No. You do not want to call the question. Oh. An I vote would be to call the question. <laughs> Radke, uh, excuse me, sorry. Yes, Alderman. We don't need a roll call for calling a question. You don't want a roll call? We're going to call the roll to. It's not even a debatable. Right. So the motion that stands right now is Resby passed. Alderman Vanderbilt has a question. Call the question, you need a vote. Two thirds vote. We'll call the vote. Okay. Yes. Is this a vote to call the question or is just the document being passed? We'll call the roll. We'll have a roll call. We need a two thirds vote. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Honor. I just have a question regarding calling the question, um, the attorney McLean had something to say about this and I was just wondering if this would influence our decision at all, if it was something that needed to be said before we voted on it. Attorney McLean, would you like to comment on this, sir? Yes, Your Honor. I, I was going to comment just on the form of the resolution, Alderman Van Der Weel, and uh, you know, I, I think I understand what, what the intent is here, but the way it's drafted, it's not that clear to me as to what the action would be uh, if this was adopted. In other words, in the, in the title, but the title isn't an operative 
provision of the resolution. The title says to state that the council has every intention to build a new police facility, but the only operative provision, forget the whereas, uh, is that the citizens of Sheboygan deserve to know whether or not the council has the direct intent of building a new police facility. To me, that kind of begs the question uh, whether or not the council has the intent of building a new police facility. Uh, does the council have that intent? I think that's what you're trying to get at. Um, so my suggestion would be to add a resolve that basically mimics what your caption is, something to the effect that the council has every intention to build a new police facility. I think that's, now I may be wrong on that, but that's kind of what I read as what you were trying to do by this resolution, is to get an expression by the council as to, yes, it intends to build the facility or no, it doesn't, and not um, just the language in the be it further resolved there to know whether or not the council has the intent, because that, that doesn't answer the question. That raises the question as to whether you or not you do have the intent to do that. So how, what would be a good recommendation to Alderman Mandeville? Well, the recommendation would be to amend the document to add a resolved, uh, really in place of the be it further resolved, just that the Common Council has every intention to build a new police facility. If I think that's the intent of what you're trying to accomplish here. Wait, do we take a vote on calling the question first, or do we withdraw that? Um, Alderman Ebert. I think I believe the question on the floor is to call the question. Yes, yes it is. And that's a non-debatable issue. You vote, uh, and that really resolves it. I don't think you can make an amendment per se. This is the superordinate motion. Right. That's right. Call the question. Call the question. So we're voting on the resolution as it's stated? No. no. To call the question. Okay, that's what we start with. To vote. Got it. This is to call the question. Does everybody understand? Please, please, Alderman Tingali. I'm sorry. Oh. I, Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess what I'm asking is if we vote to call the question, then we'll make the amendment, and then we can vote on the amendment and the, and the resolution. That's correct? my understanding. Well, if you, if you pass the vote to call the question, then the original document as, it, as it's worded is what stands, and that's what you take the next vote on. You wouldn't be able to amend the document. So it would be in my favor to not call the question. Yes. Thank you. Everybody understand that? Okay. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Okay. Montemayor, to call the question, aye. Radke? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bowman? No. Deber? No. Eber? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? No. And Meyer? Aye. Three ayes and 13 noes. Carries? Motion carries. Okay, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to amend the document to read, be it further resolved, that the Common Council has every intention to build a police station. Is there a motion to that amendment? Second. There's a second. Any discussion? If not, Owen McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. With that, that being said, then all we're voting on is whether or not we um, are willing to state that we have every intention of building a new police facility. So then the, the four whereas is there really are a mute point and they don't mean anything. Exactly. If that's my understanding. Well, the, the whereas are informational. They're not the operative language that gets adopted, but they, they give a, uh, a background as to why you're asking that the resolution be enacted. So uh, they don't add anything substantively to the final document, but they, they give sort of the sense 
of the document as to the reasons why um, the resolution is there. That being said, then, if I may, Your Honor, and then this, the third whereas, for instance, at no time should the process of building a new police station or police facility before completion be <coughs> delayed. We wouldn't have to worry about it. We wouldn't have to do that if we, if we so choose. If, if something came up, we would not be bound not to do that and repeal this resolution and, um, and ask for a new resolution or something. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a vote on the amendment. On the amendment. Can I just question Alderman Vanderweel? <coughs> I'm sorry, yes. Um, Alderman Vanderweel, um, I had you say that it, you wanted to put it in the be it further resolved, but actually, if I'm correct with the attorney, that it should be the resolved paragraph. Is that what you meant? It would be just resolve that. Be it resolved. Be it resolved rather than. Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Manny. 16 ayes. Motion carries. I will take a vote on the motion as amended. Alderman Susha, under discussion? Um, yes, thank you. Just to make this crystal clear, I'd like to further amend it to remove the last two whereas's. Second. There's a motion and a second to remove the last two whereas. And there's a second under discussion. That's perfectly all right. The motion will. will you want a roll call or an I vote? I vote. Please call the roll on second. the amendment to the motion. This would be on the second amendment to remove the last two whereases, and I vote would be to remove the last two whereases. Um, Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? D. Berg, no. E. Berg, no. Serta, no. Davis, no. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, no. Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. Six ayes, ten noes. Motion carries. Now we're, what the, we, the amendment uh, fails. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And now we need amendment to failed, sorry. Right. <laughs> okay, now, now we're we back go to, to the original motion as amended. Right, we're back to the original motion as amended by Alderman oh, Vanderweel. No. Alderman Manny on the, amend, on the motion as amended. Yeah, I simply want to say that I'm frustrated with the, uh, <coughs> the resolution. Uh, I feel like the public knows that we intend to build a place. That's not the issue. It's not the intention, it's the possibility financially. Just to put out one detail as a point, uh, a case in point, uh, the new fire station will cost twelve to $16,000 extra operational cost per year to run starting 2006 when it's built. A new police station would cost us in operational expenses $500,000. There's a huge difference with, with limits on revenue from the state and our taxing ability. It's a totally different question. Thank you. Thank you, Elmer and Manny. Please call the roll on the motion as amended. Who made that motion? Uh, the original motion was made by Alderman Vanderweel. That, the, that was the amendment. The original, original motion is Vanderweel and Serta. Right, but there hasn't been a motion that, as amended, this should be passed. Yeah. Did, didn't we do that already? Yeah. Okay, let's back up. Susha Graf amendment to remove the two whereas is failed. The one prior to that was Alderman Vanderweel inserted to amend it to add the be it further or be it resolved, and the original one was Vanderweel Serta to pass the resolution. But you still need we need a resolution to pass, to pass as amended. As yes. As amended, which is where we're going to take the roll. Alderman Serta. Well, we're at. We need a motion. Yes. Is this is our final motion. Wait, we have to put the motion. We have to put the motion on the floor first. Then <laughs> I'll hold off. <laughs> uh, okay. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to pass the resolution as amended. Okay. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to pass the resolution as amended. Under discussion, Alderman Serra. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I can appreciate older person Manny's um, viewpoint on this resolution, but I'll tell you where I'm coming from. To right now tell the citizens that it's a money issue, that we've spent money on a report, what we put the citizens and the police department through, I think at this point, point we need to make it work. And I can come back and I can show you how we can do it. 
But I'm gonna, I have confidence in you, Mayor, that you can work the numbers with Rich Gephardt and do a service for this whole community and bring us together on this. Thank you, Colin Serta. Okay, please call the roll. Radke. Are you, excuse me? I hi, he said right. hi. Thank you. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. No. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. No. Meyer. No. Oops. And Montemayor. Twelve eyes and four noes. Motion carries. Eleven. Do you have a comment, Alderman Stefan? On no, I'm, I'm there's nothing on the floor yet. I'm sorry. Um, it, for eleven ninety one. Okay. Oh, eleven ninety one. A resolution by Alderman Stefan approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease and contract for lease of land between the Redevelopment Authority and the South Pier District One LLC. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I believe I need to move for suspension. Yes, okay. is there any objection? There's a motion and a second to suspend. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please proceed. I move the resolution we put upon its passage. I'm sorry. Proceed for suspension of the rules. Uh, it requires a three quarter vote, but you can move by unanimous consent, so you would need to no objection. Are there any objections to suspension? Let me retract that. There was a motion to suspend and a second. Is there any objection? There being none, please proceed, sir. You made a motion. Thank you. I would move the resolution we put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 1191 upon its passage under discussion. Uh, basically, what this is, and uh, Paulette Enders is here, as well as the representatives from the development firm. It's uh, the culmination of a, a lease that we've worked on for a long time, let's just say. I think the council did see a, a proposal on you know a project for the uh, rice building in the area next to it. And this is the, the uh, proposed lease that they've worked out finally. Um, there is some immediacy to it because I'm sure Tom Holton doesn't want to spend any more money maintaining the building than we have to. And also with building costs going up, the sooner we get it started, the sooner the thing gets built. So we do have the correct people here. So if anybody has a question, Paulette's here, Tom's here, and the people from the Development Corporation are here. So, Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you could please refresh our memories. I'm not sure of what you're saying, that we were aware of this already. I'll ask uh, please. Ms. Ms. Enders to please talk to us, if that's okay with you. Thank you. Thank you. Paulette, please, Ms. Enders. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. And the Common Council did not see a presentation on this project. The Redevelopment Authority did. And when they made their first initial vote on the project, um, what happened was it was an open session. And then some of this information, it is on the city's website. And it, did, it was published in the Sheboygan Press. And this is a, a condominium project in the historic Rice Building. And also, in the, there's the historic portion, and then the 1960s edition. That building will have a new facade on it, and then the phase two of this condominium project will be um, a condo townhouse project that will be immediately to the northeast of the building. Any other questions? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have received several calls in regards to that rice property. They bought the building or they're going to be buying the building. If you could refresh everyone's memory in regards to the purchase price, is it a done deal? Is it something coming up? Uh, things like that, thank you. Um, and it's outlined in the contract for redevelopment and they have to have a certain amount of pre-sales before they actually purchase the building. They'll, they'll move into the building, set up their sales center, start the pre-sales, take over the utility costs, and um, there's a, a certain period, I think it's until April of 06, that they have to make their pre-sales, and then they'll move forward with the closing on the building. And the closing, the cost, the price is 50,000 for the building in an as-is condition. And there are some issues which the developer is aware of. There's asbestos in the building. Um, there could potentially be problems with the elevator. Um, it's an older roof that's been repaired. 
and um, at one time they did come back to us and ask for some asbestos costs and we said no it's in an as-is condition oh, Ms. Husha, second time thank you I understand the long-term benefits 20 years down the road getting this tax money on the, the tax base from this project however we just got done talking about adding a new fire station and increasing the property taxes. We're just still debating about when to build a very expensive police station. And then we turn around and sell a piece of property that the city owns for $50,000. Um, I've received a lot of calls about this, and I, I can't support this for that reason. The purchase price is too low. Thank you. I did take it upon myself to call several real estate Realtors that I know and asked them if 50,000 was a fair amount for that building and Every one of them said you're lucky that you got that much It would have cost a tremendous amount of money to knock it down and rebuild that thing Working around is going to be a huge huge task um, I too was concerned about that price quite frankly I was tempted to buy it myself if I could which I can <laughs> but uh, I did I did ask and I was assured that uh, that price is acceptable for the market. Please proceed. Okay, and then if I could also state, um, as part of the contract for redevelopment, there is a ground lease, and the developer will be paying, as the other um, as the other projects are in South Pier, a a ground lease price um, that's consistent with the other shanties on the riverfront area. So it's um, there's a purchase price, a ground lease price, and um, I think that the project is a good project. The developer will be held to a minimum investment on that site. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could you tell us currently what this building is costing the city to maintain? If I could ask Tom please, Holton. Please do, Ms. Sanders. Thank you. Uh, just to heat that building is about $12,000 uh, a year, and I believe it was a year before last, we spent about $20,000 on the boiler that was leaking. We had to get it welded up, and uh, there's some other issues with the roof. We had temporary patches on the roof that we spent uh, quite a bit of money on. Uh, it's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that building. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, back to Ms. Sanders for just a, mon a moment, if I could, please. Um, you talked about a ground lease. I'm not a real estate expert. Does that mean that they own the building? We still own the ground underneath it, just like anything else uh, down at the riverfront? That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Elmer. Thank you, uh, Ms. Sanders. And as, again, as just a final note, because I feel it is very important for the mayor to make this comment, I work very closely with Ms. Sanders and Mr. Holt, and um, I can honestly say that they're the two most competent people I've ever seen and I've worked with a lot of people in a managerial position and these two persons are hard workers, they evaluate and analyze and they come forth with some good, good, solid recommendations and they're able to back it up, so thank you. Any further discussion? We are ready to take the roll call. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean, sir? 1192 is communication from John Ripple, 2330 South 17th Street, requesting additional signage at the intersection of Martin Avenue and North 14th Street. That will go to public protection and safety. 1193 is a communication from William Bogert regarding moving the dog run to the beach frontage at the end of High Avenue as there is plenty of room for parking and plenty of room for dogs to run. That will go to the Board of Parks and Forestry. 1194 is a communication from John W. Webb of the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 18, Sheboygan, requesting permission to construct a memorial at Veterans Park to honor all veterans of all wars. 
And that will be referred to Public Works. 1195 is a communication from Susie Vanderweel of Aris Bex and Pottier, uh, requesting permission to once again hang the sidewalk sale banner across North A Street parallel to New York Avenue during the Harbor Center bid family event on, South 20, er, on, on September 24th. And that will go to Public Works. Motion to second. Motion to second. All those in favor state aye. Aye. We're adjourned.